Okay, so I'm, uh, I'm gonna start adding some of the charcoal to the sides now so that I have that going on as well. So we kind of create that connection just to kind of grunge it up a little. Overwork this. I want to keep it kind of uh, lively and active. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go outside and spray all of these lines in so that I'll be able to preserve them when we put wax on. All right, I'll be back. Okay, before I go to spray, I was just looking at my piece and I want to add some more of this, this blue just stronger in this area and kind of over here too. Just to bring it into the piece a little bit more and not have it be um, only in one area. So again, I'm watering down my, my paint pen here and kind of, kind of really doing a kind of a glaze with it and just letting some of that darkness come up. So you can see I've activated some of the Stabilo pencil up in here where I'm getting those really dark marks. Uh, and I love how the darkness down here brings the eye right up into that portal. And that's what we want. Just, just touching those marks that I've made with Stabilo pencil and they straight away go into a very deep black color. So now I think I am going to go and spray this so we can move on to the next step. Okay guys, so I sprayed my piece and I sprayed it with this, this Krylon workable fixative. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna just kind of fix my charcoal and stuff so that when I put my encaustics on, um, it's not gonna smudge it everywhere. But I think before I do that, I'm gonna do a few things with this tool. This is one of my favorite tools. It's the fine liner and you can fill it with white paint and you can get really great uh, fine lines. I like to use it with white, but I also do have it in black. You don't need much pressure. It takes a little getting used to. And sometimes I'll use a brush to kind of smooth things out a bit. I want to soften it. Make sure you put the lid on these things quickly otherwise they dry out and then they're useless all right so she's got a little more light on her and on those stairs so again you're leading the eye up into that doorway kind of adding to some of the drama all right i will stop here today but when i get back we will be putting wax on this Hey everyone, I'm back and this is all nice and dry. It's been sprayed so the black uh, charcoal and Sibilo isn't moving. 
and I've got my wax heating up here. Um, for those of you who haven't done encaustic wax before, I promise you it is not as scary as it looks. It's actually really quite easy to use um, and you don't need as much stuff as you think you're going to need. But check out my wax setup video which I have included here uh, for the post uh, if you haven't done encaustic wax before. And if you don't want to try encaustic wax, you could do um, a layer of matte medium, like a thick layer of the gel medium and do kind of a faux encaustic look, or you could keep it just like this. But one of the reasons I'm doing the wax is that I want to incorporate my wire and I really would like to embed some aspect of the wire into the wax. Um, and so that's one of the main reasons I'm doing the wax for this project. The second reason I'm doing it is I love, <laughs> love wax. It's something I use a lot in my classes and in my work and it adds a whole um, another level of luminosity and texture and depth to your work. So again, I highly recommend it. I'm kind of a big fan, kind of in love with it. But um, let me talk to you a little bit about what's going on here um, while my wax heats up. So I mentioned that I wanted to incorporate something with wire because uh, the lovely Donna included some wire for me to play with, which is actually very, very different for me, something I'm not used to doing. And I, I was a little nervous and was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to incorporate this? But I want to thank you, Donna, for uh, challenging me because I love a good challenge and it really got me thinking outside the box. So I played around with the wire and just kind of sat there quietly and trying to sculpt it and, and make it into different shapes and got my pliers out, uh, my wire cutters and started playing around and I ended up making a little pair of wings. Um, these are just that wire that I bent into this shape and I'll show you how I did that. Hopefully I can replicate it. Um, but it wasn't too hard because uh, again, sculpture is not my thing. I'm not very experienced um, in any kind of uh, 3D art. I did a lot of clay back in high school. But anyway, I created these from the, that wire um, and then I used wax and tissue paper, this wonderful tissue paper here. Um, that I believe I also bought from Donna as well, which is really, it's gorgeous. And I just kind of um, use the tissue paper to create like a skin. And when you coat the tissue paper in the wax, it becomes quite malleable. And I was able to then wrap it around the wires and now it's quite secure. I can bend these and move them around. And this is like a beautiful kind of uh, waxy sort of skin or uh, film that is able to stretch across the wire and it's kind of neat because it's transparent. Let me zoom in a little bit here. And they're kind of fun, right? So I'm hoping that after I put my layer of wax on that I may put these wings on my girl and have those be embedded into the wax. That's my hope. Um, so that's the direction we're going in. We'll see if it all works out. My wax is almost ready and I'm going to go ahead and heat the board first and then we're going to put our first layer of wax on. It's always a good idea to heat the board because it helps your wax uh, go on a little easier and it helps the, um, the brush not stick as much. And you'll see what I mean when I show you. So I'm just giving it a light heat. And in terms of um, this heat gun, this is just a basic heat gun I got from my Ace Hardware. It was like 25 bucks. It's got a, a high and a low, and I always use the low. I've never used the high, it's just not necessary. You only need to get wax to about 200 degrees for it to start melting. So this is, it works great. I have a craft dryer, and you'll see that in my um, setup video. That's what I started out using, but this works a lot faster. So if you have a craft dryer, you can totally use it. It just takes a little longer. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and dip into the wax and do my first coat here. This is always a little bit scary. So that's just kind of part of it, right? Doing something new. And I'm just kind of dipping in and then tilting my brush up a little bit. Let's see if I can get that in the shot. So I dip in and then tilt up and then go ahead and apply. I'm going to zoom out so you can see the whole scene here. 
And you can see that the wax becomes kind of um, cloudy at first. And that's just because it's really warm. As it starts to cure, it does become a lot more transparent. So after you do a first uh, layer of wax, you're going to have to fuse it. And what that means is basically I'm going to heat the whole surface again until all of the wax becomes molten. And you'll see that it looks kind of wet and shiny. And so what that is doing is it's bonding it to the surface and it's also smoothing out any of the little irregularities I've got from uh, the application. I like to kind of tilt my head down low so that I can really see when that that wax gets very hot. You can see it because it goes shiny. And as soon as it goes shiny, I move on to another area. You don't want to just keep your heat gun just sitting there because then you'll end up getting the wax and it'll start to smoke. And we don't want that. That's when it releases unhealthy toxins. kind of move in circular, small circular motions, just kind of moving it around, getting all the little areas. You might get some pot marks or some areas that you missed with the wax. Don't worry about that too much because we're going to do another coat. Just let that cool for a minute. So I can see here um, there are areas I didn't get so well with the wax and I'll just get those on the next time. Here you'll sometimes see an area that will resist the wax that typically will go away on the next coat. So what I like to do now is turn it and go this way so we kind of go in opposite directions. What's great about wax is that it's actually very forgiving. It seems kind of scary, um, but you can melt it off. You can scrape it back. You, if you don't like something or you don't like how it was applied in one area, you can totally scrape it back and try again. Um, and that's kind of the nice thing about wax. So again, I'm going to fuse. So now as I turn my head to the side, I can see certain areas where the wax is a little bit having like a resist. So I'm just gonna go in and dab on some wax in those areas. Don't try and go for a glassy finish, especially if this is your first time with wax. It can take quite a bit of experience um, using it to get that effect. So in those areas that I kind of patched, I'm just going to go in and fuse lightly just to get them to blend. Alright, so I've got two pretty nice coats on. See a couple more areas that I'm just going to go in and dab a little more. But again, I'm not after a perfect finish. Okay, and again, you see that it's really cloudy, right? But that will cool and it will clear up. Wax does take some patience, so try not to work too quickly, um, especially again if this is your first time working with wax. It really is an amazing medium though, especially if you love collage or if you love paper. Um, you can do so many things with wax. So now of course I would wax the sides as well and I will do that um, in a little bit. But right now I'm going to focus on the top here. So I'm going to wait for that to cool and start to clear up a little bit and then I'll come back. So while the piece is kind of resting on the front, it's now cool enough for me to actually 
pick it up and turn it on its side and none of the wax is moving. You want to make sure you don't move your piece until, you know, the wax on the front gets pretty cool. But I decided I better go ahead and uh, wax the sides. And it's the same process. I just go ahead and take the wax and dab it on. Just like that. And then you just do a quick fuse. It does kind of beautiful, amazing things to paper. And you'll see that, depending on the papers you use, the wax will react differently. But um, it goes into the paper, let me zoom in here. It goes into the paper and creates really some neat effects. And again, this cloudiness will go away as it cools. So I'm gonna wanna let that sit for a minute before I turn it, otherwise the wax will run. This is what I was talking about with patience. Sometimes you got to take a little breather and uh, let the wax cool enough so that you can then move it. So I'm going to let this continue to clear up. And in the meantime, I'm going to show you how to make the wings. So I've got a good length of wire here. It's probably, um, I don't know, maybe even 18 inches, 24 inches. And I made the wings by bending one wing, then two wings, and then I made the littler ones, so just smaller loops. And this is not going to be very exact because it was kind of um, a fluke that I actually even made them. But so yeah, one loop, two loop, make another third loop, and then I took this little centerpiece here and kind of secured it so I kind of wrap it up around through the middle and you know there's probably like a million ways to make these this is just how I happen to have come upon it and so I just wrap that wire around All right. okay and then made that fourth loop here so I kind of, you end up with this sort of a shape. You guys see that? It's sort of like that. And then with this long bit, I just wrapped that around the center a couple of times, kind of tightly. Trying to get, you know, similar size here. But they can be kind of organic and unique too. They don't have to be perfect. And then you can wrap it as many times as you want to. And this is where these little pliers come in handy for getting these little bendy bits, the small bits, to really fold up. Okay, so that's basically what it is. And then I just snipped off this extra bit. And then just wrap that too. Okay, that's basically how you make little wings. I mean, you could make them any way you want to. And this, this one's a little bigger than this one, but I'm not gonna worry about it. It's okay. And then to kind of make the wings sort of pointed, like this set, I um, took the pliers up at this top part, kind of squeezed it with my fingers, and then further squeezed it to create more of a point. Okay, same thing on this side. Squeeze it up a little bit and then squeeze up at the top. Up at the top, top. To kind of break that point. And then you can, this wire is pretty malleable. I'm not sure of the gauge on this wire. It didn't come with um, that information. But it's pretty easy to bend. Thank goodness. And like I said, this is pretty out of my, I think I'm just gonna twist this a little bit to make it smaller. Um, this is definitely out of my comfort zone to work with wire. I'll just twist this one too. And, but I actually uh, really enjoyed it. 
you know, and it just goes back to, you know, experimenting, right, and being open-minded with your art and trying new things because you never know what might take your fancy. And then same thing at the bottom here, I just kind of pinched the ends to create these little wings. So that's basically what they look like, if you guys can see that. Okay, little wings, kind of cute. Again, you can make them any shape. I also played with making um, leaves. These were really fun to make. I'll zoom in on that. And I actually put paper uh, in between the wing, uh, in between the leaves with wax. So I'm going to show you how to do that with the wings now. All right, so I got the tissue paper. I think you could use any kind of finish paper. Um, so a lot of these vintage papers work quite well, I would think. But for the demo, I'll just do what I did. And I just got a piece that was sort of the size that I needed. I'm not very exact kind of person. And I just laid it underneath the wire, okay? You can even take away some of this excess because you really don't need quite this much. That's not very exact, but oh well. Okay, so you can tear off some of the excess if you like. Now this part, it feels a little awkward, but it does work well. I'm just trying to push that little point down so I don't get jabbed. All right, kind of flatten it down and just kind of tuck it in a little bit. This is going to become a lot stickier with the wax, but it's just to kind of get it started. So not being super detailed with it because again, once we add the wax, it becomes a little bit more malleable. So I just kind of folded it over, squished it down, and then I'm just taking my wax and dabbing it right onto the paper. And you'll see immediately that it, it bonds to the paper and then kind of, as it starts to cool, it like kind of becomes like a glue. And so this is where it's important to work on wax paper too, otherwise it's going to stick to your table. And make sure you have your wax paper ready. or some other non-stick surface. So again, just dabbing on with the, the wax. And kind of stick it down. I was using um, like the end of a paintbrush or you could use like a little tool like this, like a clay tool to kind of push push in here but really as soon as you apply the wax it becomes um, a lot easier and then on the other side I do the same thing I cover it in wax okay and then you have your little wing. Pretty neat, right? Now, the last step, I'm just giving it another little coat here. Last step is to fuse it. I'm gonna take my heat gun and just fuse that side, let it cool, flip it over and fuse the other side. If you get too much wax on your wing, you can drip some off. This is just to bond it to the paper. There we go. Just like that. Let it cool. And you end up with a little feels like a skin. It's really kind of cool. It's like um, like an onion skin sort of feel. <clears throat> so you know up here the wax kind of gathered. Maybe it's too much. So what I'll do is I'll just put my heat gun on and let it drip off. So if you get globs, just let it drip off. 
You really don't need much to make the wings uh, stick and work. So if you get areas that are too thick, you can just let them, let them off there. There. Okay. Pretty cool, right? So you can go around the whole of your wings and uh, create each little wing, just like that. So I'll do another one just to show you again. So that's how you make these little wire wings with the wax and paper. So next step is getting it onto my board. Okay, I've got a crazy mess happening, which means I'm having fun. Uh, she's looking great. The wax is quite cool now. You can see some areas I'm gonna scrape back a little bit. This kind of tool is a loop clay tool. Really handy to have when you're working with wax because you can just go ahead and scrape back areas that have gotten too thick. Or if you happen to have gotten a, a paintbrush hair or something in your in the mix that you don't want, you can just scrape, scrape the wax back. And what I love about wax too, and you can see it's done it here, is that even though this girl was collaged on, now with this layer of wax over the top, it's like all smooth and it all kind of creates this sort of um, cohesive, beautiful surface. So what I wanna do, I think, to add a little bit more to this piece is to um, get my pan pastels and, and burnish some color into the wax, and I'll show you how to do that. And then later on, we'll be adding our wings. All right. Now, if I didn't like um, the pan pastels, I could take um, a cloth with some baby oil on it or some linseed oil and wipe it right off and it would be gone. So um, don't get too concerned if you do something you don't like on there. That's creating a little bit more of an intensity, a little bit more of a, a brighter light. I'm gonna put a little bit of that yellow kind of coming out of the doorway. Do a little bit of that yellow coming out onto the steps. Okay. Out. It's hard to fit everything on my table here. So again, I'm trying to carry that, that color through the piece. And uh, this Prussian blue goes beautifully with any kind of a yellow ochre tone. So I'm bringing that light in just subtly so you can see it kind of spilling down the stairs using very little amounts of the pan pastel. Very subtle. But you can see, let me zoom in so you can see here. You can see the pretty textures that are happening. <laughs> 